In this video, we're going to be creating a Scratch project to make a maze game. We're going to control a beetle character using our arrow keys on our keyboard and get the character to navigate through the maze. If you want to follow along with the instructions, go to our website 123code.org and put in the project code B456. Okay, so the project code is B456 and click on Start Project and it'll bring you to the step-by-step -step instructions. So the object of this project is to create a maze game. So we'll have a maze in our project and a little beetle sprite character. And we're going to program our arrow keys, the up, down, left and right arrow keys on our keyboard to control the sprite. And then we're going to detect when the sprite touches off a wall to prevent the sprite going through the wall and just cheating. So the first step is to create a new Scratch project. So let's go to the Scratch website. We're going to open new tab. And then we're going to click on Create, and this will launch the Scratch Project Editor. We're going to close down the tutorials. We don't need those. And we're also going to delete the cat because we don't need the cat in this project. So we can just click on the trash can here. Okay, so step number two is to save the maze picture onto your computers and then upload it into Scratch. You can open up the little tip box here and it'll show you how, or you can just follow my instructions here in the video. So I'm going to put my mouse above the image and then I'm going to right click and click on Save Image As. So I'm going to save it on a folder on my computer. So just take a note of where you are saving it to, what location on your computer. And once it is saved, you can go into Scratch, go down to the bottom right to adding a new sprite. And what we're going to do is choose the Upload a Sprite option. Next, I am going to find where I saved it to. And I'm going to select it and then click on Open. And this is going to add it into our project as a sprite. OK, so step number three, we're going to add in the Beetle Sprite. So the Beetle Sprite is in the Sprite Library. So to open up the Sprite Library, again, go down to Choose a Sprite. And this time, click on the magnifying glass. Beetle, this is alphabetical, so Beetle should be up near the top. Here it is here. We're going to add that in. There we go. So we want to, step number four is to shrink the beetle. So it's too big, as we can see, it's too big to fit through the kind of corridors of the maze. So we're going to need to make it smaller. Um, and we also want to position it at the start of the maze. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make it a bit smaller. So let's drag in a when green flag clicked. Go into looks because we're going to change how it looks and we're going to set the size to let's try 15%. Click on the green flag and yep, that seems to be small enough. Now, the next thing we want to do is at the start of the game, we want to position our beetle at the opening of the maze. So what I'm going to do is drag it to the opening of the maze and then I'm going to go into the motion toolbox and bring in a go to X, Y block. And these values for X and Y, which is the location uh, that the sprite is at, are already pre-populated for wherever the sprite currently is on screen. So if you notice, they're minus 162, minus 75. If I was to move the beetle sprite, you'll see that they'll change to the new location. So I'm going to move it back to the start of the maze and then drag in the go to x y so we'll, you'll see how this works now if i just drop the beetle up above click on the green flag and then you can see it starts it off at the opening of the maze in step number five we're going to program the arrow keys to move the beetle so for the up arrow we're going to point the beetle in the direction up move 10 steps down arrow point in the, in the direction down move 10 steps and so on so for left arrow point left move 10 steps and for right arrow point in the direction right and moves 10 steps. So we're going to add these code blocks to the beetle sprite. So make, just making sure that the beetle sprite is selected here. And then I'm going to go into the events toolbox and bring in a when space key pressed, but I'll update that to up arrow. Then I'm going to go into the motion toolbox because I want to point in the direction up. So when I press the up arrow, we can see at the moment it's pointed to the right, but it should point up. 
So let's change that to zero degrees, which is the direction for up. Let's just test that. So I'm going to press the up arrow on my keyboard and we can see it points it up. Actually, I might add in a point in direction 90, which is to the right at the start for when green flag clicked. So just so it begins in the right direction. So the other bl block we need to add into this group here is to move it 10 steps. So each time I press the up arrow, you can see it points the direction up and moves 10 steps. So let's duplicate these group, these blocks here, and we'll change it for down arrow. We're going to point down which is 180 degrees and move 10 steps. So we can see up and down is working. Duplicate twice more and we'll do the left arrow, point to the left and the right arrow, point to the right. So now you can see I can move up, down, left and right. Now, when I enter the maze, you'll see if I want to cheat by going through a wall, I can. So we, we're going to need to add in some codes to prevent you going through the walls of the maze. So let's move on to step number six. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some code to the when green flag clicked uh, block of code we've already added. And what we're going to do is add in a check to see if the sprite is touching the maze sprite. So if the beetle sprite is touching the maze sprite, we're going to move backwards 10 steps so that the beetle will take a step into the, into the wall of the maze and then take a step back. So it'll essentially reverse the step so it won't let you go through. And we're going to put these in a forever block because we're going to forever keep on checking if the beetle is touching the maze. Not just check once, but constantly keep on checking for if the beetle is touching the maze. So let's add these in. So I'm going to just move these aside so I have a bit of room. Let's go into the control toolbox to get the forever block. And then we're going to get an if then block and put it inside the forever block. So again, we're forever checking this. So let's go into sensing to see if the beetle sprite is touching the maze sprite. And if it is, we simply want to move 10 steps backwards. So let's go back to the start and let's test this out. So as you can see, I'm trying to go through this maze, but it keeps on ju jumping me back when I try and go through the walls. So in that way, you have your maze, you have your sprite character, you've programmed the arrow keys, you've prevented the, the sprite from going through the walls and you're able to move through the maze and play the game that way. So that's all the code you need to add. If you want, you could have an idea of how you can make the game a little bit better. Or is there anything you could add into it? Um, some of the ideas my students have come up with before are to put in a little portal. So, you know, you could draw a green dot here. And if you touch on that green dot, it transports you, you know, closer to the end. You might want to add in a timer. So, you know, you could save how many seconds it takes to finish the maze. You'd need to maybe put something at the end of the maze, like a red line or a blue line or something like that. And once the beetle beetle touches off the line, you could stop your timer. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions or comments, just add them in the video below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to get our weekly coding projects, make sure to click on subscribe. And if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see us make next, just comment in the video below.